Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Today, I just want to talk about a few books that, yeah, got me back into fiction. I always loved reading fiction as a kid, and I think I fell out of it for a few years. I think maybe a part of that is because I went into a pretty intense STEM degree, so I studied computer science in my undergraduate and then also for my master's. But last year, I had a wonderful opportunity to study in Dublin, which is obviously a city of literature, and was really able to rekindle my love. And I want to talk about some of the books that helped me do that. So let's get into it. <laughs> So the first book I want to talk about is, hopefully you can see that, and it's The Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. Essentially, it's the story about a boy named Jed who is youthful and prideful and has a pretty decently sized ego um, who makes a pretty profound mistake when he's young and spends the rest of his young adulthood and his teenage years trying to come to terms with that mistake that he made and trying to find himself despite the mistake. And ultimately, you know, it's a story about balance. It's about it's a story about finding oneself. And it's a story about reconciling with the mistakes that one has made in the past. And I really love this book because, first of all, I think it was one of the books that I read over the past year that felt really like a familiar fiction book and part of that is because a lot of the ways it's a it's a it's a hero's journey you know it's this young youthful clever witty male protagonist who at the end of the day is like a very powerful character he is a hero he's on this journey to find himself um and i think that felt very familiar and in that way like made this book really feel like very accessible and familiar to what I had previously what the kind of fiction books that I used to read as a kid um but i think also like this book pushed me to think in a way that that I don't think a lot of like fiction books in this category really do. So I guess first of all, Jed um and a lot of the main characters in this in the story are dark skinned or black, like his his best friend is black, which already is great just in terms of like representation and seeing that in a in a in a book that's sort of well one that came out in nineteen sixty seven and that is geared for, you know, sort of like younger adults. But also I think the central themes of this book are about finding oneself and are about balance. And so it's this like hero's journey and hero's book. But the themes, like the enemy of the book, isn't some like foreign enemy that needs to be conquered. It's Jed. It's like Jed himself. And it's all about his journey to find himself and to come to terms with the mistakes that he's made. And it's this story of discovery and of maturing in a way that I think really pushes you to think and to reflect and to consider, you know, the parts of yourself that are pleasant and the parts of yourself that are really like less pleasant. I think I just really, really love that. And I love the way it forces Jed to come to terms with you know, his pride and his ego. And even though he's this all powerful, a powerful character, the fact that he can still be held back so much by fear of himself and fear of this mistake that he made as a younger person. So I just really, really loved the book. I thought it was felt very, it felt conventional in ways, but also felt so, so original and fresh and refreshing in a lot of ways as well. Um, I just loved, loved, loved reading it. And yeah, for sure, definitely one of the books that got me back into fiction. The next book I want to talk about is The Outsider by Camus, a French philosopher. Thank you to my friend Ferris for putting me onto this. Um, and so this is a book that takes a pretty simple story about a guy who's pretty emotionally invulnerable and pretty indifferent to the world. He kind of like makes a decision or makes a, a decision that doesn't really make too much sense to murder someone. And the book kind of like uses that fairly simple plot to explore ideas of absurdity and ideas of like indifference and the fact that the world itself doesn't have any meaning that's attached to it but that instead we assign meaning to it and that we give it meaning by you know assigning value to our actions and to our choices and to the decisions that we make and i think i read this book when i was um just like on a plane ride from london to dublin and so it was really only I think it was really only over the course of like two hours. But I think what I loved about this book is, again, yeah, the idea of like finding purpose and value and assigning that to the actions that you make and that really like at the end of the day, it's you yourself who's assigning and who's bringing that value to the actions that you make. Like no one else can really do that. And when other people do, it's like never going to be a direct, like when other people do try and make a mapping or do try and make a sense of like the actions that you've made, that the actions that you've done or chosen, it's never going to be a one-to-one -one mapping of what you, of like the reasons why you actually chose to do something. And I think 
some other things that I really enjoyed about the book is that it was also my first time reading this sort of like philosophical novel and where the story itself is pretty simple, but it's really pushing these ideas or these more like philosophical ideas and it's forcing you to reconcile them. And I think why this book stood out to me so much is that I realized that, okay, like you don't always have to go to a nonfiction book to explore these idea or to exp explore these kind of like expository ideas like those ideas can really be wrapped up in a nice in in, in this like fictional um an environment of like fiction and in a way that gives the reader so much ability to interpret and to digest and to think for themselves and to introspect and to reflect on the text itself rather than you know reading this sort of stuff in a non-fiction book that tells you oh like you know you assign meaning to to, to, to the actions and no one else can do that for you like it's the difference between having food that has been chewed up versus being able to savor and taste and you know put put a, a spoonful of like a really delicious delicious meal into your mouth and chew it for yourself and i think i love the fact that this book made me realize that fiction and like novels can explore these kind of like more non-fiction like ideas or these like more like life um, ideas, these phil philosophical ideas, but it can be encapsulated and wrapped in this like story and narrative that makes it stick. And that also gives you as the reader so much room to think and to explore these things for yourself. Um, and I, I just love that. I love that it was such a quick read for me, but that it sort of really welcomed me um, and opened me up to that idea of how novels can be actually like a source of like self-help and, and learning and all of that. Just things that I think that I lost quite a bit um, in, in the years that, you know, that literature was maybe a little bit more absent from my life. So the next book that I want to talk about is Curse by Madeline Miller, which is um, told from the point of view of Curse, which is a character in the Odyssey. And essentially the book kind of like goes through her interactions with various characters, with Helios, the god of the sun, her father, um, Zeus, um, Odysseus, and a bunch of other characters. And I think what I really loved about this book is that it felt like such a fresh take on a Greek mythology story where the hero isn't this, you know, demigod or isn't this like, you know, new god with insane powers that's coming to save the day. But instead, it felt very authentic. It felt, it felt very real. Curse herself is this kind of like clumsy, uh, sometimes like very like irritable character. But like despite everything, despite everything that she goes through, she's always this deeply authentic and genuine and truthful truthful character to herself. And actually like one of the biggest points in the book is that she tells a lie, but that she like is self-aware and is self-reflective and like it just always felt like very very authentic um and never lied to herself even if she might have told lies to other people um and i think i just really really loved that aspect about her about that she wasn't this like perfect character this like perfect you know greek mythology um um persona but instead she was this really real and accessible and it felt like so many of her interactions could be taken out of this book and um, exemplified in like real life, like, you know, in, in family dynamics or in school dynamics and all of that. And I just loved being able to read a book that felt familiar with like the Greek mythology, all those themes of like magic and like power and, 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 and different flavors of, um, uh, different flavors of powers as well. But where the emphasis was really on the interactions, the dialogue and the characters and the flaws and, you know, the great aspects of them and the less pleasant aspects of them. And I just absolutely, absolutely loved it. And it was one of those books that I just could not put down as I was reading. And yeah, it was just felt like such a treat to read. And um, yeah, just, just such a treat, just such, such a treat. So these were just some of the books that I think really helped me rekindle my love for literature, but also just for fiction specifically over the past year. And I'm so grateful to have stumbled upon them or to have gotten them as recommendations. And yeah, it's just so great what you can get out of reading a story and reading a fiction book compared to, you know, reading a nonfiction book where things are already sort of digested and synthesized for you in their most like pithy form, but don't give you enough room to interpret and to reflect and to think about these things for yourself um yeah just really really love fiction and we'll absolutely going forward make sure that you know there's always a fiction book in the rotation um so yeah so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video